how the establishment gets you to lie for them. This is a very critical element to understand and can influence the way you make decisions. I'm Justin Hitt from Inside Strategic Relations. Those in power sell the narrative that keeps them in power. They condition audiences to support them and reinforce their established position as superior. Now, that is a a big claim. And you might have come to mind politicians, actors, people who have gained power and influence who, quite frankly, are in a instable situation because there's a lot of competition. See, when you talk about becoming rich, everybody wants to become rich. Some people will do it ethically. Some people will do it without qualms of you know ripping off the next person. But ultimately, the higher you get up on the social pyramid, the more competition there is to maintain that power. So those who are established politicians, established influencers, tend to need the the support of their audience. So what I'm going to share with you today, and, and there are many strategies that are used, but I'm going to share with you three particular strategies that are going to help you um, understand if somebody's trying to manipulate you or if they're trying to educate you in a way that's mutually beneficial, as well as some of the insights necessary to make sure that you're not being manipulated, that you're not being influenced outside of your own good. Now, this is very powerful for anybody who feels something isn't right about society, something isn't right about an organization, maybe something isn't right about your career choices, uh, and you feel compelled to look beyond the veil, to look a little bit deeper. Now, when you understand that these established individuals, whether it's in a small organization, the boss, uh, that these, or it's in a, a country like a president or a political party, when you understand that they create narratives to support and maintain their power, you'll start to see that their power is really weak. It really has little to do with your day-to-day activities. So let's talk a little bit about the problem here. First off, the media makes it difficult to know what is true and what is not. You can see the same event reported on in four or five different ways. It's very difficult to know whether they're telling the truth or not because sometimes they, you know, the breaking news, they don't have all the information up front. Then they start tying the breaking news to different narratives that are out in society. So maybe you've heard different things like um, equity versus equality. Maybe you've heard different things about the wage gap or, uh, you know, getting a seat at the table. These are concepts that become themes in media reporting. And when you start seeing these themes and understanding these themes, and, and here's a little exercise. When you're watching the news, watch a news story on three different channels. It doesn't matter if they're all you know leftist channels or right, right-wing right channels or, or just neutral channels. You, you watch the same story, a couple of different channels, and you write down what is common between all reporting of the story and what is different. Uh, there's actually a really nice news site that shows you the biases in media, but essentially it's a practice in recognizing biases. So what I teach in critical thinking is that there is no one truth. Each of these media channels has their own perspective. What we need to be careful about is that their perspective isn't given to them by someone in power versus they just come up with that perspective on their own. Another thing is it's it's difficult to maintain the established power or the area of influence. And if you don't understand these methods, then you can have power taken away. And I really see power as a neutral element. You could have power for good. You could have power for bad. What if the power for good is taken away because they don't understand these particular methods? Now, the establishment wants stability, and they certainly don't want to be challenged. So if you've ever looked at a situation and said, look, I, you know, I'm going up against the man. I'm not going to be able to do anything. You have to understand that the man is just like you. They have insecurities. They have frustrations. They have challenges. And there are ways within the concept of strategic relations to work within the system in order to get what you want and to get the results that you're looking for. The challenge is, is recognizing these key factors that the establishment uses to get you to lie for them 
in order to make sure you're speaking the truth, to make sure you're making decisions based on facts rather than feelings. Now, again, this method can be used for good or bad. I'm going to share with you three key strategies that are, that the establishment uses to get you to lie for them. But again, there are many more strategies. In fact, I, I'm writing a special report on the topic. If you're interested, contact us at www.insidestrategicrelations.com. Simply go to the contact page and ask your questions about the influence of power or how the establishment uh, really manipulates general population. So again, what's the solution? Well, of course you could you could – you could just tune out and ignore what these politicians are saying. We know that politicians um, promise more in their campaign than they could ever deliver in that office. Uh, and, and the bigger problem is that when they get into office, they spend more time securing that power rather than doing the work at hand. And so some people are just simply ambivalent. They just check out. They're just like, well, I'm not going to do anything. But here's the problem. If you check out in all areas, you miss the opportunity to recognize the manipulation and then to put your effort and energy behind uh, worthwhile goals, whether they're worthwhile goals in your own life or they're worthwhile goals in the marketplace. Again, we have to understand the influence of power and how those who are in power or in established areas use their position to maintain what they do. And we have to approach it with a neutral view because really, if you're just going to fight the establishment, then after one established group is, is drawn down, you now just have another group to fight. Because there will always be folks in the top 1%. There will always be people in powerful positions. There will always be poor people. You must decide which side you're going to be on. And if you're going to be a force for good or a force for self-interest. But again, fighting the establishment is too vague and pretty much keeps you always fighting. Another thing is to research your position. You may actually have certain power and influence where you want to use these methods to maintain that power and influence so that you can complete a worthy goal. Now, I'm going to leave it up to you to judge what is good and what is bad, what is worthy and what's not. That's not my place. Um, I do advocate that you have strong written moral foundations. You write down what you'll do and what you'll not do to get power. You'll go through goal-setting exercises. Uh, But again, I try to present as neutral as possible, the concepts for you to use for your benefit and hopefully for the benefit of those around you. But let's talk about some of these three, uh, three of many methods that those in established positions use in order to maintain their power. Number one is applying emotions to generic situations. Okay. You have um, an event, something that happens in public, and now we are, uh, these folks in power are going to Take the common situation and elevate the emotional aspect. And in fact, they're going to use that generic situation that happens all the time as why they are right and how you should support them in transforming or changing the narrative. Now, this applying emotion to situation could be done with false facts. So the the killing of so armed conflicts with police officers, if you go look at the stats for them, they're not as they're not anywhere near the common narrative. In fact, uh, when you talk about gun violence, uh, more people die from like preventable medical conditions than die from the use of guns. And the use of guns in violent situations is majority self-inflicted. Uh, so these guns are not being used in crimes. They're not being used in a lot of areas. Now, that that said, guns are used in crimes just like hammers and fists and feet and uh, you know poison and, and uh, other household objects. But ultimately, the emotion is going to trump this situation. And then you can stack – these situations. Black Lives Matter does this a lot. You can stack these situations. Now, again, I'm not saying whether the situation is good or bad, but what I am saying is that someone who wants you to spread a story or support a narrative needs the emotional perspective so that you you don't think about it, but you feel it. You act on it. Another thing that they do is they they establish the belief 
that opportunity is given rather than earned. So this is very important. Politicians do this all the time. They say, you don't have a seat in the table because of the patriarchy and because this system is against you. And all you need is someone to give you a chance. And you hear the narrative with feminists sometimes, um, we just need a chance. Now you hear it with conservatives as well, is if only the government would allow prayer in school. If only, so, well, by saying someone out there can grant you the powers that you don't have, that can bestow upon you opportunities that you see others enjoying, they're reinforcing the concept that you have to ask for permission and you have to go to the establishment or create a new establishment in order to get what you want. Frankly, folks, in all the years that I've been doing uh, business or working in in different interesting environments, uh, you always have more power than you can imagine. You always have the position to make a decision that's going to have a beneficial outcome to you. Now, again, if you believe your boss is the only person who can give you a raise, then you miss out on the opportunity that you can just go get another job. You know, you can start a side business or you can, uh, you know, find a new opportunity in the same organization. People who have established power, even in, in the lower levels of power, want you to believe that they have to grant you or somebody will grant you that next opportunity. And this essentially has you giving away your power to make different decisions uh, to support their narrative, which is um, they are the gateway to your success. All right, next narr- next um, factor here or method that's used to get you to lie for people is the creation of false narratives. Now, again, with both of these uh, tips that I gave out, the emotional um uh, the emotions connected to, to generic situations, the belief that opportunity is given rather than earned. You build narratives around these to help people understand. Now, again, they're not, this is not the truth that, that these folks are doing to, to understand the story. In order for you to lie for someone else, you must believe it's true. People don't, unless you've got a you know, mental disorder, you, most people don't lie unless they see an immediate benefit or they believe what they're saying is the truth. So the wage gap becomes a debate rather than facts showing the difference between hours worked, dangers of the types of job choices, and ultimately experience levels. So the wage gap concept has been disproven so many times, but in order for this false narrative to maintain power, it has to be repeated. It has to be tied to specific examples, and it also has to uh, be easy to remember. So it's going to be talking points like wage gap, seat at the table. Um, now, again, I'm not seeking an argument with the audience. That's the challenge I have in showing these materials. I'm fascinated by social dynamics, social engineering. I'm fascinated by how people leverage influence and then how very often people are trained to be weak in order to maintain the established positions in power. These false narratives, um, including false narratives that start wars or justify wars like weapons of mass destruction being in, in, in Iraq, um, these narratives are well defined within the strategy of someone who wants to gain influence. Now, again, there are many strategies here. I've got at least 25 written down here, including understanding the purpose of propaganda, focusing on the believers rather than the detractors, and in fact, uh, getting the, the believers to speak on your behalf, using the false narratives, using the emotional elements, and then asking for your guidance and permission to move forward. These are powerful things to understand. In fact, when you understand these concepts, you'll be able to identify when you're being manipulated. You'll be able to position yourself on the, the winning side of an argument, and you'll ultimately be able to uh, sustain a position to make better decisions. So again, 
If you believe opportunity is given rather than earned, you'll tend to stay in bad situations. If you are emotional over a topic rather than, than, than sitting down and objectively looking at the situation, you're going to tend to do what you're told. And finally, when you believe false narratives, there is the cognitive bias that you've already staked a claim on this false narrative and to go back on it makes you look inconsistent. So we have the mental challenge associated with this. But again, this is a fascinating concept. And if you'd like to explore it more, visit me at www.insidestrategicrelations.com. Go to the contact page and write in with your questions. I'm Justin Hitt, and we're here to help high net worth individuals, um, individuals with high incomes, and other people who have the opportunity to influence, to make better decisions, to protect their self-interest, and to ultimately uh, transform business relationships into profits. Thanks for listening.